you know that if you take a sample from a track like this, any sample will do, and then you duplicate it, and then you add a utility to the second track, and then you switch the phasing between right and left, you hear absolutely nothing. And the reason for that is because the waveforms on the track are playing exactly the opposite of each other and therefore cancelling each other to zero dB. And the way you can really see that is if you actually go into the waveforms of the track, you'll see that they're identical in most part. And if we freeze and flatten the track with that utility built into it, you'll see straight away that the waveforms are basically cancelling each other out. So there are things you can do to take it out of phase. For example, you can change any of the elements in utility you can add mono, bass mono, any of these elements, because that's essentially changing the waveform of the track. The other thing you could do is you can change the position of the second or the affected tracks. So for example, if we just move this a nudge forward, just a couple of milliseconds, they're no longer in phase, although they are slightly in phase because the waveform is only slightly out. So it still sounds relatively weak. So we take that track out, sounds a bit thicker, doesn't it? The other thing we can do is we can use the EQ to shape the second track. For example, we can take out a lot of that low end. Just bear in mind when you do that and you take out some low end on an EQ, what will end up happening is that you might have actually some more phase cancellation. The reason for that is because you're changing the shape of the frequencies and you can't actually see what shape it's changing to. So you might actually have this correlation between two tracks where you're phasing without realizing. So one thing you can do if you're using Pro-Q3 is use a linear phase and that will just give you a smoother overall phase. You'll get a little bit of latency, but a little bit is okay in this case, just to make sure that you don't have phase cancellation. So I guess the message is if you're using instruments in a similar range, especially in low end ranges like bass and kick and those types of instruments, you should be very careful about phase cancellation if the waveforms are hitting each other at the same frequencies at different moments in the song, or if they are basically very similar or cancelling each other out at certain points. And you need to be very careful with your EQing. So if you want to say, for example, take out this range here, because there's a similarity in terms of frequency between bass and kick that you are using linear phasing. You don't need to use it all the time. You just want to make sure that you're not getting any phasing effects. A lot of times it's actually difficult to know when there's phasing because it's actually difficult to hear sometimes. Sometimes it's kind of obvious, but sometimes it's not. So there are lots of actually really cool phase correction plugins on the market. The one I really like, if we just take a look here, is this one here called In Phase. I think it's very good. And then there's another one here called Melder Auto Align. I think it's also really excellent. And there are loads of others on the market. I just found these two of interest. So what do you guys think about phase cancellation? It's kind of one of these hidden dangers in mixing and mastering that I think all producers need to know about.